بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Welcome to a new analog designer's toolbox tutorial In this tutorial, we will design a fin fat amplifier using ADT We will use 7 nanometer low VT devices We have a spec on the supply voltage, the differential output swing, the transconductance of the NMOS and PMOS devices And the goal is to find the transistor widths, the bias voltages VBN and VBP And the target is to maximize the amplifier's bandwidth before going to the simulator or to ADT, we need to analyze our amplifier and determine our design decisions. So in this example, since we have no external capacitance, the load here is just the parasitic capacitance at the drain of the NMOS and PMOS device. And in order to maximize the bandwidth, we need to minimize this drain capacitance. And as this drain capacitance is proportional to the device width, then we need to minimize the device width. And we already have a predetermined GM, so we actually need to maximize this ratio. We need to maximize the GM over that. And of course, in order to maximize this ratio, we need to bias our device in the strong inversion region. So we need to minimize the GM over ID because the minimum GM over ID is there in the strong inversion region, and the GM over ID is inversely proportional to V star. So we need to maximize our V star, and V star, as you know, is corresponding to the overdrive voltage in the square law. So now let's go to ADT and verify our design decisions. I opened an empty project. I will go to the device explorer interface. I will load the lookup tables of the NMOS and PMOS low VT devices. I will select the LVT NMOS lookup table and the LVT PMOS lookup table. The lookup tables are loaded successfully as we see here. So I'll go to plot 1A, I will select the lookup table of the NMOS device, I'll put VGS on the x-axis, and I'll put GM over W on the y-axis, and here is my plot. As we see here, in order to maximize the GM over W, I need to go to the strong inversion region, but if I put too much VGS, I will actually start experiencing mobility degradation, and the GM over W will start degrading as we see. So I'll put a vertical cursor to find the point that maximizes the GM of the W, so the vertical cursor here, and I'll find this point. So I need to bias my device in a strong inversion, but without exceeding this VGS value in order to avoid the mobility degradation effect. I can also examine the same plot, but using actually GM over ID as my x-axis. So I will import this plot, but I will put GM over ID on the x-axis, and as we see here, again, in order to maximize the GM over W, I need to choose a small GM over ID, which again corresponds to strong inversion region. But if I choose too low GM over ID, again, I will start experiencing mobility degradation and the GM over W will start degrading. If I add a vertical cursor here, I can also find that I need to bias my device in strong inversion, but again, without going below this value. Of course, this VGS value is too large actually and it will be violating our output swing specification, so most of the time we will not be operating in this region. We can do the same procedure for the PMOS devices, so I'll go to plot 1C, I will import plot 1A, but I'll change the lookup table to the PMOS lookup table, and then I can see again that my plot here that the GM over W is maximized when I go to strong inversion, but again here we have mobility degradation effect. I can also add a vertical cursor to find the point that has the maximum GM and I should avoid going beyond this line. I can go here again and I can import plot 1B and change the lookup table to the PMOS lookup table, add my plot, add a vertical cursor, and then I should bias my device in a strong inversion, but I shouldn't go below this GM over ID value. And again, this very high VGS or this very low GM over ID corresponds actually to a large VDZ and will be a violating the output swing specification. So using simulation data, we verify that maximizing V star achieves our goal of maximizing the bandwidth of the amplifier. We can now go back and complete our design procedure. We have a spec on the differential output swing, peak-to-peak, -peak, and we have a spec on the transconductance of the NMOS and PMOS devices. 
we can assume that the saturation voltage is approximately equal to V star, and actually both of them are equal to the overdrive voltage in the square mu model. So we can simply write the equation of the differential output swing of this amplifier. We subtract V star n and V star p from the VDV, and then we multiply by 2 to get the differential output swing. So very simply from this equation, we have only one unknown, which is the drain current. So we can solve for the drain current, and we can calculate that the bias current of the transistors is equal to 56 microamps. So we now have our drain current. We can go back and calculate the GM over ID of the NMOS and PMOS devices. And as we see, both of them are biased in a strong inversion, but we are still larger than the point that maximizes the GM over W. So we are avoiding going to the mobility degradation region. In order to get the best accuracy from our extracted charts, we need to define the VDS of every transistor because, as we know, the VDS affects the IV and the small signal parameters of the transistors. So we can assume that we have a common mode feedback circuit that will adjust the common mode output level at the center of the output range. So we can calculate the common mode output voltage like this, and consequently we can calculate the VDS of the NMOS and PMOS devices. So now we are ready to go back to ADT and calculate our sizing. I opened another figure. Here I have the NMOS device. I'll put the GM over ID on the x-axis and I'll put the device width on the y-axis. I will set the VDS to 355 millivolts and I will scale the device width to the bias current flowing in the device, which is equal to 56 microamps. I plot here my device width versus the GM over ID. I can use the magic cursor to find the width that corresponds to the GM over ID of 7.14, and this is my required width. The scale adjustment I did here is exactly equivalent to doing cross multiplication. So instead of doing scale adjustment, I can write W times 56 micron divided by ID if I append this to my plot, I will get exactly the same trace. I can now calculate my bias voltage. I will go to plot 2B. I will import the settings from plot 2A. I will put VGS on the y-axis. I don't need a scale adjustment in this case. And I will plot here my VGS. I can copy my GM over ID value from here, paste it here, and I will get the VGS value using the magic cursor. I can repeat the same procedure for my PMOS device. I'll go to plot 2C. I will import the settings from plot 2A. I will change my lookup table to be the lookup table of the PMOS device. And here I have the width versus GM over ID. I will set the VBS value to 445 millivolts. And I have my scalar adjustment activated. And here I have the width. I will use the magic cursor to put the GM over ID value of my PMOS device, and I will have here the width of the PMOS device. Next, to calculate the bias voltage of the PMOS device, I will go to plot 2D. I will import the settings from plot 2B. Here I have the VGS versus the GM over ID. I will change the lookup table to the PMOS device. But actually, the bias voltage is not the VGS itself. The bias voltage, VBP, is equal to VDD, which is 0.8, minus the VGS of the PMOS device. I'll update the VDS value to that of the PMOS device. And here is my bias voltage. I will copy the GM over ID of the PMOS, put it here, and the magic cursor gives me the bias voltage. In order to take into account the quantized nature of the fin fed, I need to calculate a discrete number of fins for every device. So the width per fin for our technology is 27 nanometer per fin. So I can approximate the NMOS device to four fins, and this is the updated width. And I can approximate the PMOS device to three fins, and this is the updated width. As an exercise, you should repeat the whole design procedure using super low VT and stacked devices. So please visit our website and get your free ADT personal license, start using ADT and send us your feedback 
We really want to make designers happy. Thank you and see you in the next tutorial.